it, 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 it's, it has this doctrine and this truth and this foundation. And Paul is writing to the church in Rome. He isn't writing to the sinners of Rome. He's writing to the church of Rome. And he said, listen, I got some things I need to share with you. We have the, the greatest book on doctrine and, and truth uh, that we have in God's word. Although we take the, the whole word of God, there's just something so powerful throughout this book. In Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, this probably won't be on the screen, but it says, For I am not ashamed uh, for the power of God of salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, which Paul was a Jew, and also the Greek. For in its righteousness, God revealed the faith from faith to faith, as is written, but righteous, uh, the, righteousness, the righteous man shall not live uh, by faith, shall live by faith. Paul is showing us and, and, and brings this revelation and this understanding of righteousness. And it all begins, and it's going to get better as the series go on, but I get to talk about sin. And sin isn't talked about all the time. And, and, and I think lots of times there's a challenge because it, it, it can sometimes just, just hit us straight forward. And I'm so thankful for our worship time today because I believe God prepared our hearts today for today's message because he loves us so much that God does not want us to perish God does not want us to drown in our sin but experience his presence and his grace and his mercy but I believe and I feel that in our society today that there is this this uh, uh, tremendous challenge that we have in the church to be judgmental all of us judge people how many know that all of us judge people you drive by someone that's a panhandler and it may run through your mind maybe i'm just being too honest why don't you get a job you know uh, they hold it beside do you have uh, uh, spare change yes of course i have spare change but it's my change you know Someone comes up, hey, can you spare a dollar? Or, or do you have a dollar? I said, of course I have a dollar. That's for me to take care of my family. <laughs> you know, and, and, and sometimes we can get in those things. Sometimes we, we look at, at, at the cars people drive and we judge them and say, man, look at them. Look at what they have. When they may be, be crying every time they have to fill out the mortgage. The, 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 mortgage. <laughs> the car payment. <laughs> How many know car payments today are about the price of what mortgages used to be, right? And, and, and so there's this challenge, and we look at people, and we look how they dress, or we look at their, their hair, or we look at their, their, their body type, or we look at what they do and where they go, and we become judgmental. And the same thing happens in the church, and lots of times these are things that, that we face as, as Christians, and I think there's a challenge sometimes for us in the church when we see what's going on in society around us, to, to point our fingers and be judgmental. And there's a difference between judging and being judgmental. Judgmental is, is coming to this place and saying, listen, you know what, uh, I, I, I'm pointing my finger against you, but I'm okay on my side. And, and, and this is what they were facing in Rome. And, and Paul brings this out, and he begins in the first part uh, 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 of, of Romans chapter 1, and he's talking uh, to them and wanting to come to them. He had never seen them. And, and, and then he talks about this faith and come to them. And then he talks about uh, God's wrath on the unrighteous. On the unrighteousness. And, 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 those, and all of us are unrighteous. And, and there was a sense going on in the church. I, I, I feel, or I don't know if there was that sense because we don't know that Paul wasn't there. But there was something Paul was addressing maybe from his heritage of being a Jew and being uh, one that was uh, uh, so critical of Christians and, and, and he faces this, and we get this picture uh, in, in chapter 2, we're going to begin. We're just going to look at the first five verses right now, and then we're going to go backwards from there for a little bit. In Romans chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges. For in the passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself, because you judge Practice, uh, uh, practice of every, uh, and you practice the same, very same thing. We know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O oh man, 
You who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourselves, that you will escape the judgment of God? <laughs> Paul's like going, what? Or do you presume on the right riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead us, to lead you to repentance? Talking about his grace and mercy. We're going to spend a little more time on that. But because of your hard and impenitent, impertinent, I practiced it a hundred times. Impentant, <laughs> sorry, impentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath uh, when God righteous, uh, righteous judgment will be revealed. Let's pray. Lord, we just ask you to be with us today. Lord, I need your help today. Lord, we come because your word is truth, because your promises are true. And so, Lord, I thank you that we can take some time and look at your word today and just uh, let it speak to us and challenge us today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. When the first part we're going to spend some time is, and that's this, this life without God. Uh, can you write next to that? There's not a fill in the blank, but you can put a little dash or a little something and just put sin. Sin. Because we have to talk about sin. We have to see why this therefore is there. Because we want to see what was before that. And, 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 and Paul is, is talking about this unrighteousness. And then he, he gets to verse 24. And there's another therefore there. Therefore God gave them because of their, their sin that we have to keep going back and back and back. So we'll start there. Therefore God gave them up uh, in the lust of their hearts to impurity. Uh, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passions for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and, 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 receive, and receiving in themselves and due penalty for their error. And, and, and I'm just going to pause there. What verse am I on? What verse did I end with? 27. I just have to remember because I forget. And, 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 and I, I picture those in Rome, those who were Jewish, those who were of, of, of the culture of that day that were living this, this holy life, kind of almost with their noses in the air, uh, uh, living this life, and they're probably going, yeah, preach it, brother. Preach it, brother, yeah. Yeah, look at them. Look at how they're living. Look at what's going on. In our world today, does this sound like our world today? Yeah. Right? And, and, and I picture them saying, yeah, preacher, brother. Go on, come on, tell me more. And since they did not, verse 28, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what they ought not to do. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness. There's this list of over 20 here. Unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are all full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. Uh, they are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents. <sighs> Foolish. <laughs> Faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous decrees that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. And then we're going to get to the therefore. <laughs> There's this incredible list. And we have to be careful as God's people as the church in Marina Valley, not in the church in Rome, but as a church in Marina Valley, the church of the Inland Empire in Riverside County, we have to be careful when we look at this list. Isn't it interesting that it, the whole list is there? There's not a priority, but there's gossip with murderers. What? 
It's not the same thing. Come on, Pastor Gossip. Social media, people gossiping about people are causing murder in our society today. Come on. Tell me more, Pastor. Tell me more. Right? So these are the things that are going on and happening. And he gives this whole list of sins. And, 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 and it could be broader and you can go down. It. And this whole list is there. And I think it's easy for us to look at the ones in the list that don't apply to us or that we don't think apply to us and point our fingers at the world and at the society today going on and say, uh-huh, see, I told you so. Right? It's easy for us to judge others. But the, the fact is we need to really search our own hearts for sin in our own lives. When we see what's going on in the world today, Lord, don't let me be caught up in these things and the pleasures of this world today. Uh, don't let me be, 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 be trapped by these things. Lord, don't let me be caught up in, 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 in gossip or in some of these things. And the whole list is there. I don't have to, have to do that, but, 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 you know, full of envy. You know, these are just some of the things next to next, next, haters of God, slanderers. Gossips, you know, uh, deceit. People are deceitful, right? These are all things that happen to everybody. These are all things that we may not find ourselves on the big list there, but life without God is a life without sin. Life without God. And this gives us a picture. This gives us a picture of how life is when God isn't in the picture. This really gives us an honest picture of that. And so we need to go beyond that. And, and, and today I want to take a little bit of time and, and talk about this and go into to Romans chapter 2 and find out, therefore, this is why it's therefore. This is what he's addressing to those in the church of Rome. And, and we can fill this in and fill the blanks as we go along today as we look at this and, and, and begin to follow. But let me, let me share with you before we, before we get into that some things that were going on uh, uh, that, that we can look at that day. And I think some people answer these things today this way. I think many in the world today answer the list of sins, answer this list that is here uh, 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 of what life is with God, uh, God and, 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 there, and there, there's a pattern of sin that develops in people's lives. And, and, and they, they approve of the pattern of sin. Some people within the church, some people, uh, of course, those without God are all following that pattern of sin. In, in verse 24, in verse 25, I think there, there's, there's three things. These aren't to fill in the blank. You might want to write them somewhere else if you want. But, but, but three things they live in the pattern of, of sin is people ignore God. They ignore God. They don't believe God exists. They ignore God and who he is, right? Therefore, they gave themselves up to the lust of their hearts and impurity, dishonoring the bodies because they exchanged the truth about God or a lie. This is not our main text. We're not spending a lot of time here, but I got to keep moving. The other thing is people replace God. And if you read those verses 26 and 27, uh, that they replaced God. They, 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 they say, well, I'm not going to do God, so I'm going to do things my way, and they replace God. And the last part, 28 through 31, you can see people reject God. They reject who God is. They reject the truth. Uh, they were filled with every manner of unrighteousness. And so us as believers need to try to, 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 to look at things and have an honest look at it. And I think some people look at this and say, well, that lots of people like to blame Paul or like to blame the sinner. Well, they're a sinner. They shouldn't be saying these things. They shouldn't be judgmental. They shouldn't be doing this. That's true. Some people say, well, it's not true. But how many know that God's word is proven to be true? All right? And so we know it's true. And I think this is what's said of Lot today. And as Christians, we need to be on the alert as people say, God's word is out of date. This isn't for the times we live in today. And God's word remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Can you say amen? So let's look at this in as kind of way as possible. I think it's important for us to, to, to watch out for a judgmental spirit, a judgmental spirit, that we need to be careful to watch out for this because Paul is addressing it. Paul is addressing it to this church. We're going to catch a whole bunch of other lot better fun things as well, but we have to address sin issue. We have to address it within our life. Here, here's the thing. I want to give you uh, three things under this. We need to watch out for judgmental spirit that has condemnation towards others while, 
well, well, excusing ourselves. We're condemning condemnation towards others. Well, on your notes, it says, well, well, excusing ourselves. See, lots of times we look at others and we say, listen, look at what they're doing. This is being judgmental, and Paul's addressing it. We're being judgmental, and we're looking at them, and we're not looking at ourselves. Lots of times we say, hey, listen, I'm not doing too bad because of how they're doing, right? And we look at how other people are facing sin, but yet we don't search within ourselves and say, Lord, what, what's going on with me? What's happening in my life? We condemn such people and we go against it and it's right that we, that we stand in this place of judge, but we don't be judgmental. We understand what sin is, but we're not throwing it in their face, but recognizing, Lord, would you show me what is going on? And so there's no excuse. There's no excuse. That's what we call this no excuse. We can't make excuses for it. We can't just look at others and say, well, I'm doing better than them, so I'm okay. No, we can't excuse ourselves in our own sin. The second is contempt for God's plan. We, we don't like the way God thinks about it. See, uh, th they are thinking that they were the chosen people, that, 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 that they were in a different position and they weren't like the heathens of that day, but they were the called out ones. They were the church. They were the ones that were, were brought forth. And, 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 and so, but, but, but there can be contempt for God's plan plan verse 2 of Romans chapter 2 we know that the judgment of God rightly falls on those who who, who practice such things God's plan there is going to be judgment I'm going to get to the good part it's in here <laughs> do you suppose oh man that you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself and you that you will escape judgment who, who do you think you are you think you're going to be okay you judge others, and so you're going to be judged in return. In fact, judging is a sin. You're, you're, you're the one that's going to be the problem because you're just looking at others. You're not looking within yourself. And we have contempt for God's plan. We don't understand. Why can't I just live in this grace and mercy and love? I believe in God, and I trust him, and I, and I honor him, and I come to God's house, and I worship him. Right? And, uh, <laughs> and, and I think sometimes, you, you know, you're, you're going down a road, and it's, there's a sign up that says, the bridge is out. And you look at the sign, and you just drive by and say, man, that sign must be for somebody else. That sign must not be for me. And I think lots of times we miss it when it comes to the things of God and the Spirit of God moving in our life and speaking to us. And we say, oh, that's for the real sinner. And that's for that person out there. And that's for that person in the world. When we need to look within ourselves and say, Lord, search me, oh God. Know me today. The bridge is out. Take the sign. Paul is addressing something that we need to look at. And he says, verse 4, for the, uh, or do you presume... On the riches of his kindness. See, lots of times we're grace, 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 and we overcook grace. And it tastes bad when you overcook it. And we need to realize that God is gracious and his love for us is great, and we need to come and we need to surrender it. But listen, we can't look at others and excuse ourselves. We can't have contempt for God's plan because God's plan is holy and righteous and pure. How many know that to be true? And, then, and the third one is we continued stubbornness continued stubbornness we have a judgmental spirit because we continue to be stubborn we continue to hold on to what we think is what right and what we perceive instead of going to god's word and the truth of, of god's word break down the walls of all my traditions right we sing that song and i will make room for you right and, and it's about saying listen i need to to tear these things down and we can get a mindset Listen, this is an important message, not just for the new believer, but if you've lived for the Lord a long time, don't get stuck in a rut of being judgmental. Can I say that? Don't continue in stubbornness. Look at verse 5, Romans chapter 2. But because of your hard, impertinent heart, you are storing up the wrath for yourself on the day of uh, the wrath of God and righteous judgment will be revealed. Because of your heart, impertinent heart, you, you're not repentant. You're, you're not turning 
from sin. You haven't done that. You're caught up in your way. And we need to realize <laughs> that God's goodness and who he is and understand because, because truly God is righteous and holy and, 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 and true and, and God gives us better than we deserve. Amen? Because we are sinners. He shows us kindness even when we've ignored him. God has shown a, 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 us kindness when even we've mocked him at times. God shows us, uh, he, and he's not a cruel master. He's not a cruel master that when we surrender, he still receives us in. He doesn't just slaughter us and cast us off too late. For you, O oh sinner. He loves us, his kindness. And we, we should look at it with gratitude. So uh, we, we talked to these. So what's the cure? What is the cure for a judgmental spirit? What is the cure for a judgmental spirit is trusting God as judge. Trusting God as judge. You don't need to fill that out. That's just a, just a point. See, we need to come to the place and really rely upon God and say, God, I'm going to trust your ways. God, your ways are higher than my ways. Lord, I'm going to trust your promises, and I'm going to trust that you are going to handle matters. How many think that God's probably a better judge than you are? Not everybody. That's okay, maybe your arm was tired. But lots of times we get in this mindset and we think maybe we know the word of God and we worship God and we're faithful to God's house and we give our tithes and our offerings and we minister and we help people that we're in a position that we can be judgmental towards others. Listen, we need to trust God to be judge. We don't, need to, we don't need to handle that position. Take that stress off your list. You don't need to do that. Let God handle it. Let God handle it because in trusting God, because, because here's one, two, three, four, five things I want to give you. First of all, we need to understand, you can read this later in verses 16, uh, 6 through 16, but God always knows the truth. God always knows the truth. God always knows the truth. God always knows the truth of man's heart. God always knows the truth. He sees through everything. We can't hide it. We can't put it back. He always knows the truth. He, he, he knows what it is. His word is true. His promises are true. He is a holy, righteous, perfect God. Isn't that nice to know that we have a perfect God? And we can trust his ways. <clears throat> we don't have to try to figure it out and say, well, do I need to be judging this? And do I need to be judging that? Lord, you search me. Lord, I need to judge myself. I need to search within my heart. The second one is God judges. God judges by our actions. God judges by our actions. Look at verse 6. He will render each one according to his works. Well, Pastor, you tell us all the time. It's not about works. That's right. But our works are judged. By God. This is what it's saying. I'm just preaching it. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm just reading it out of my Bible. So if you want to blame somebody, you know, blame God. See how that goes for you. He will render to each one according to his works. Did I read that correctly? I did. Once in a row. Point for me. Listen, we have to stand accountable. We live in a society today, and many in the church today don't want to stand up for the truth and be accountable for their own actions. They're always pointing fingers, and we're being judgmental towards others. Well, I act like this because of them. Well, I act like this because my parents said this. And I act like this because the government, Governor Newsom, does this. And this political party does this. And I, 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 I act like this because of the pain God gave me in my leg. Listen, stop casting blame. We need to understand. He will render to each one according to his works. What are you saying? He says, listen, we are going to be judged by our actions. But listen, God's kindness, his grace and mercy is here. I don't want you to get too upset yet because uh, uh, how do I become good? How do I have good actions to honor God? Listen, let me tell you, let me something. This might be worth writing down. Saving 
faith produces good works. Saving faith produces good works, but good works cannot produce saving faith. Let me say it again. Saving faith produces good works, but good works cannot produce saving faith. It's not that we're saved by our works. How many know that? We say it all the time. It's about coming to Jesus Christ. But my life, when I surrender to Jesus Christ, there is going to be actions that take place. One of them we celebrated last week. How many had a great time with celebrating baptism last week? Amen? You know, over the weekend at Auburn University, there was a, a, a worship service gathering going around at Auburn University just this week going on. And that worship service just kind of turned into a little revival going on. And, uh, and, and they made their way down to a lake nearby and baptized over 200 service students at Auburn University this week. <laughs> See, there needs to come to the place, church, I want you to look at me and understand this. We have to be responsible and accountable for our actions. We can't keep passing the buck and blaming others about it. That is sin. That's a judgmental sin, and we put cutting off to someone else just like this. We're doing this, and Paul's addressing it. And when the, the greatest books on foundation and doctrine of the church, we have to understand sin. And God judges our actions. You are not saved by your actions. You're saved by grace. I come to Jesus. The thief on the cross was saved. Why? Because he called upon Jesus. And actions in our life change. So when I come to Jesus, there needs to be this transformation in my life that takes place. And we need to begin people who are living holy lives, righteous before God, that we're taking God's word as the truth and the promises of God's word. And our language is going to change, and our attitude is going to change, and our giving is going to change, and our service is going to change, and our life is going to change because of the power of Jesus Christ, not ourselves. And we need to say no to sin. Sin is not my master. Don't let it control you. Don't let it take over your life. Come to the place and recognize that I need to be held accountable for my actions. And God will give you the strength to do so. God will take it because he loves us and he cares for us. And we have to continue to understand this as well. Here's the next one. It's nice to know in verse 11 that God shows no partiality because God's judgment is fair. God's judgment is fair. God is holy. He is righteous. He is pure. He is perfect. I love that song we sing that has that line. He is perfect in all of his ways. He is perfect in all of his ways. Because when you're going through trial or tribulation, or you're going through struggle, all these things are taking us and leading us, and he's guiding us to himself. And don't just sit there and say, see, see, lots of times God is, is sending us messages. He sends us message through his word. He sends us messages as people come into our lives. He sends us and he's drawing us to, our, to him because he loves us. And his judgment is fair. He has every right to cast us away. But God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus. And because he sent his son Jesus... We can understand that he has grace for us that when we receive him and our lives are transformed by his power and grace. You ever drive down the road and you see a double yellow line? That line is there. That law is there. That law is there to protect us. Years ago I was driving a van load of kids up to camp and we were going around the corner and there's lots of corners going up to Big Bear and I was driving I was actually driving the bus not a van, I was driving the bus and, and a police officer was coming away a CHP officer was coming away and as I went around the corner it's a real tight corner, I know exactly where it is I remember it every time I go around because I crossed that double yellow line and I got pulled over with a busload of kids. 
I was the youth pastor. My dad was the pastor. He gave me a ticket. Kids were taking pictures. <laughs> Not with their phones. <laughs> I pulled the bus up to the camp. A lot of you have been there. Pulled the bus up in front of the lodge. It wasn't that lodge. It was a different lodge then. Pulled up, let the kids out. And I, I almost think it was coming down the hill before it went up the hill. Pastor got a ticket. Pastor got a ticket. My dad, did you get a ticket? Yeah. See, that double yellow line I shouldn't have crossed because God places for me in his word. He places for me with his law. He says, listen, this is here and this law is here and these, these, these truths of God's word and, and, and God's scripture is there because his law and his words and his promises keep me from destruction and keep me from being hurt and keep me from a life that separates me from the things of God. And so many times we continue to cross over the yellow line when we know it's good for us to stay within the law and the promises and the truth of God. Can you say amen? But we're always flirting with sin. Instead of living with the truth, and we live in a world today where there's so much chaos and so many lies, don't, don't listen to the lies of this world. Listen to the promises and the truth of God's word. Because this world wants you to say, it's okay to cross the line. It's okay to cross over. It's just a little bit. It ain't gonna hurt. Ignore the sign that says the bridge is out at the end of the road. I love you, church. And God judges us through Jesus. On that day, verse 16, in the New Living Translation, verse 16 says, and you might not have it on the screen, and this is the message I proclaim, that the day is coming when God, through Christ Jesus, will judge everyone's secret life. I love you. Sometimes these sermons have to be preached. You know I'm all about love, God's love. You know I'm all about God's care. But if I didn't tell you about sin, then I don't love you. If I don't discipline my children, the Bible tells me that I hate them. Don't keep flirting with sin. Don't have a judgmental spirit towards all around and think, well, it's going to be okay because I'm just covered by God's grace. We keep overcooking God's grace and it tastes nasty in the mouth, in the mouth of a believer. It's through Jesus. God judges the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. He loved us so much. I want to go back to verse 4. Of chapter 2. It says this. We can put it on the screen. Or do you presume, this is where a lot of people live. I presume God's grace is there. I presume God is going to cover me. Because God's grace and mercy, but not when it's in our heart of a judgmental spirit. Not when it's in our heart that we are just going to do it anyways because we're presuming God is going to give us grace. God is righteous, holy, and just. On the riches of his what? Kindness. And the forbearance, right? The holding back of, holding back of, and patience. Some of your translations say tolerance. Here's a word we hear today. Tolerance 
not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to what? Repentance. So all this we talk about, and the reason I don't mind talking about sin, and the reason I, want, I struggle with it is that sometimes I forget that we need to understand what repentance is. Let, 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 let's work this last phrase backwards. Let's look at repentance. Repentance is doing a U-turn. Repentance is coming back to Christ and coming to Him. It's a change of mind, a change of heart. I say it all the time, and I don't mean to try to brainwash you, but how many know that our brains need washing? Repentance is this change of heart. It begins. Change of mind. Change of action. Change of heart begins. Here's the doorknob. Sure glad we have this doorknob here. Repentance, a change of heart. I begin. I begin to change. Change of mind. I make a decision that I'm going to do something. And I begin to hear the click. Hear the click. Hear the click of repentance. When that door latch comes over, that God is taking you from, from, from the depths of darkness. Hear the click. And open it up. Change of heart, change of mind, change of action. Going in the direction that God has called you. Walking away from sin and walking into the truth and the promises of God's word. We need the click. We need the click. That moment that you turn around, that, 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 that some of you remember when you came to Jesus Christ, but maybe you came to Jesus Christ years ago and there's been some things that have been leaking into your life and things that you need to repent of and you need to turn to God. And he says, listen, repentance, turning around. Let's work it back. And repentance uh, kind of is meant to lead you. Lead you. His kindness is going to lead us. His love for us is going to lead us. His grace and His mercy for us. The fact that He sent His Son Jesus to die on the cross. That He could be the God who just says, I'm done with you. Be gone from me. Out of my presence. But He's a God that is patient and forbearing. He's taking time. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you, even though you struggle with sin. Repent. His, God's kindness. His love. Today we talked about turning our eyes upon Jesus. We talked about giving it all to him and looking it to him in our worship time together. Listen, church, this is what about. Here's the last fill in the blank. The cure to judgmental spirit is trusting God as judge because God is kind. Because God is kind, if I truly have a heart of repentance before him, I receive his grace and mercy and love and forgiveness, and I walk in the joy of the Lord and the promises of his truth. Amen? Amen. And I want to live there. And there's that place of, of just being clean and, and trusting in God and seeing what God is going to do. So maybe there's been a sign up in your life, and, and, and there's been songs coming your way or people talking into your life and, and actions that you're doing in life that say hey the bridge is out and you keep driving by the bridge the bridge sign and as you're driving by the bridge sign you keep crossing over the yellow line maybe the signs for you maybe the signs for me it's for all of us because God's word exposes the life-changing truth of Jesus Christ. If your life is not changing, you need to check something. If your life is not being transformed by the Word of God, the power of God, and the teaching of God, we need to come to Jesus. Worship team, will you come? Will you stand together this morning? Thank you for being patient on your time with me today. Thank you, Jesus. Can I pray for you, Lord? I thank you for each one in this place. Lord, I'm so thankful that your word is not hesitant or afraid to talk about challenges that we face in our life. And Lord, we think about sin today and we think about 
times that we've been judgmental against others when, Lord, we need to examine ourselves. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Just take a moment to think about what's going on in your life. I believe maybe there's some here today. If I can be so bold and say you've been crossing the yellow line. You know the yellow line is there. You know God's law. You know the truth. You know the heart of God. But yet you choose to not trust it. And so you choose to go down your own path. Lord, would you search the heart of each of us today? Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. We love you, Lord God. We know that you are God. I believe there's some in this place that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. There's things you're you're flirting with in your life. And you know better, just like the Church of Rome knew better. Paul was addressing and saying, listen. Listen. Lord, would you help us face sin in our own lives? Not look at the others in this room. It's not about them. But right now, it's about you speaking to me. Forgive me of judging others when I fail myself. Jesus, Lamb of God. Holy Spirit, would you remove blinders right now? Every head bowed and every eye closed. Sometimes I think maybe people who, who haven't come to Jesus or struggle with, with having faith, I, I, I kind of get this picture today of a, of a dark forest and there's darkness and there's nothing but darkness. And then all of a sudden there's just this, this glimmer of light, just a little bit of light. Not a lot. It doesn't light up the whole forest. It doesn't reveal everything. But it's a light that you see. And I want to encourage you today to move towards that light. I want to encourage you today that some of you are maybe here today and there's been sin and struggles in your life that you have been doing for decades. And you say, I've tried, I can't get out. Don't do it on your own. Do it with God's help. Take a step towards that light. Confess your sin to him right now. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me for the, the attitude or forgive me for the gossip or forgive me for the murder or forgive me for the unrighteousness. Lord, I need you. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to tell you God's love is amazing. But God is holy. So the first thing is that we need to admit that we're sinners. We have to believe that Jesus is the way. We need to confess that sin, and then we need to decide to live for him. If you're here today with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to give an invitation today. I want to give an invitation for, for those of you, and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because you need to deal this directly with God, not with me. That if there's some areas of sin in your life, some lines you're crossing, some signs you're ignoring, just right now, will you acknowledge that before God and ask his forgiveness? Things you've been watching, things you've been doing, things you've been involved with. Some of you have been casting judgment on others when you have sinned yourself. Right now. 
Father, come. We need you. And then maybe there's others here today and you've never received Jesus. I want to give you an invitation right now to receive him. By inviting him into your heart and your life. Saying, Jesus, I need you. I admit I'm a sinner. I believe that you are the answer. I confess my sin for you and I decide to live for you today. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to say a prayer out loud. I'm going to invite everybody to repeat it out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for speaking truth. That your word is truth. And that your promises are true. Speak to me today. Reveal sin in my life. That I may turn to you. That I may trust you. That I may live in your promises and have an abundant life. Thank you for your kindness. I love you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give it up for our Savior. Amen, let's worship.